This testimony involves what happened to the spent rounds that weren't fired. The defense saying those live rounds were hidden from them by the prosecution. The prosecution saying nothing was hidden. Soon we'll hear from the expert on those rounds and what happened. The prosecution then asking for a separate hearing on whether the witness should be allowed to testify in front of the jury. The judge saying why not allow that testimony to take place. You can see the actor there. Alec Baldwin right now, standing by watching all of this. Let's go to Los Angeles entertainment attorney, Trey Lovell. He joins us now live. And Trey, just moments ago, that legal kerfuffle concerning the bullets, and, and that led Baldwin's attorneys to argue the case should be thrown out. Do they have an argument? Well, they certainly have an argument. You know, the prosecution is required to tender over any and all evidence, and it's not up to them to determine what's relevant and what's not. Um, and they didn't do it. Um, and so, but the question is, you know, how much is it hurting Baldwin's team? Baldwin's team is arguing, hey, we would have, you know, strategized differently. Who knows what that could have, have led to? It's material. But one of the things you got to remember is, you know, how the bullet got on the set is not really pertain too much to Baldwin because it was already there. With Baldwin, it was more, you know, his duty as an actor, where he, he should have checked the gun, you know, his conduct at the moment of the shooting. So I think it's a little bit of a red herring, but what it does show is that, A, you know, the prosecution glossed over potential defendants. I mean, they could have, you know, targeted other people, but rather they targeted Baldwin. There was implications made that they, they weren't too concerned about finding how the bullet came on set because they knew they wanted to go after Baldwin. So in that sense, I think it resonates with the jury. But Trey, let me push back on that because imagine, if you will, that it was Alec Baldwin who bought the bullets on to the set. Um, we would be having a completely different argument. So I keep hearing people ask, where did the live rounds come from? Doesn't this go to that particular argument? Well, you know, I think it's, it's certainly important because it, it, it goes to the heart of, of the bad conduct. But I think it pertains a little more to Gutierrez. Uh, since she was the armorer, it's her job to collect ammunition. Um, there's no issue or, or that whether or not Baldwin brought the round on set. He hasn't. There's no evidence that he did, or evidence that he that he knew it was in the uh, in the gun. Um, and so I think what it helps is sure we want to find out how that live round got on, on set. But even if we find out who gave it, whether it was Gutierrez, whether it was Seth Penny, we're still back to the issue of Baldwin and his conduct with the gun uh, and what happened at the shooting. Um, and I so so I think that's more of what the of, of the relevance to him. Um, and it's just, you know, it, it's important, but I don't think it's pivotal with respect to the case against Baldwin. And, and Trey, we're looking right now at the bullets uh, arriving back in, in the courtroom. Um, I guess the argument now is over whether they come in a box or in an envelope. But I want to go to the upcoming testimony of the armorer in this case, Hannah Gutierrez Reed. She is set to testify this afternoon. Will she help or hurt either side in this case? Well, you know, I think she could. Potential. Well, here's the thing. First of all, um, she has been convicted and she's appealed the conviction. Therefore, there is a chance if it gets reversed, she could be on a she could be on a retrial. And so she's very concerned about any testimony she gives could be used against her in the event of a retrial. So that's where this is coming from. And the government or the court are not giving her immunity. So so she's exposed to any of those statements. So that's why she doesn't want to make them. Um, another thing you got to remember is is the the Fifth Amendment. Um, is not blanket immunity. It's a it's a question by question analysis. So you can't come in and say, hey, I got you know my case is on appeal. I don't want to testify. No, because there are certain questions that may not be subject to to the privilege. So at some point she's going to have to come in and 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 go question by question and then assert the privilege. In terms of who it could help, you know there are statements that she made to detectives um, that she should have checked the gun better um, that actually helped Baldwin. It, 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 it takes the, the, the blame off of him and puts it on her. Um, so they can get those statements in because there are exceptions to the hearsay rule of the declarations against interest. But if she doesn't testify, the prosecution can't cross. So that's what they're concerned about. So um, I think if, if, you know, if, if by her not testifying, if she pleads the fifth, it's going to help all of so, Trey, uh, just so that our audience knows, you're looking at the live images coming out of the courtroom. They are still uh, before the judge right now, a bench conference. Um, question, though, before we go back and if we go back, uh, this all boils down to whether the jury believes that actors are allowed to pull a trigger and point a gun and whether there should have been more safeguards. Is that a, a good bottom line assessment? Absolutely. That's what this case is about. 
um, you know, whether or not the the rules in the real world apply to the movie world. Uh, and it's Baldwin's defense's job to really elucidate the difference and to show, hey, in a movie world, it's completely different. In a movie world, you have people who have jobs and responsibilities. Everybody has a duty uh, on set. Actors act, directors direct, and armorers are in charge of set safety and, and, and prop safety. And, and the expertise le- needs to stay with, with the experts. So the argument is, if actors are now re- required to, for gun safety, to check their own guns, we're now taking that obligation out of the expertise of an expert into the, ex- the non-expertise of an actor. So they got to explain that it just gets more dangerous. That's why safety stops or it, it is secured before the actor. So, so once the actor gets a gun, go ahead. No, no, no I, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but uh, I've got 30 seconds left. And I have to ask, I saw Rambo, Rambo 1, 2, 3, I think we're up to 35. If conservatively 6 million rounds were fired, um, are we now saying that every round that was fired from Sylvester Stallone's gun in Rambo 1 through 35 is the responsibility of the actor? That's an excellent point. Uh, and you obviously you can't say that. that. That would never be practical. Uh, wh- what about, you know, if you have an Uzi and you got 24 rounds, is, is an actor supposed to stop, take it apart? What if, what if the armorer checks the gun, clears it, gives it to the actor? The actor starts inspecting it for his own concern. Now it's got to go back to the armorer because the actor could have manipulated it. So, you know, that's why it's so important. You make up a great point. If you leave the set safety with the experts, nothing should happen. Trey nothing Lamar. bad should happen. Trey, thank you very much. Uh, we were keeping an eye on the judge, so didn't mean to cut you off, but I'm listening to two conversations. Uh, one in my ear is we're watching the courtroom <laughs> in New Mexico, and the other to your answer, but the, the Rambo defense might be something for another day. Trey, thanks very much for being with us. Thank you.